Hey everybody, Shadow Ninja here and welcome back to Rage Quake. This is my review of Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. So if you're watching this video, that means you've already seen the movie, or you don't really care for spoilers and just want to know what the hype is about. Just a little side note guys, thank you all for the recent support you have given me. We just hit about almost 30 subs and my oldest hell video about how to unlock, destroy it in Godzilla has hit 800 plus views. Just know that every view and every sub counts, so I just wanted to put that out there. Alright, where to begin with The Last Jedi? We start off with the opening crawl, telling us that despite the destruction of Starkiller Base, the First Order still reigns supreme and are chasing the Resistance down rapidly. We see Poe Dameron try to distract the First Order Star Destroyers while the Resistance evacuates from their base on Dakar. Keep in mind, The Last Jedi supposedly takes place right after The Force Awakens. Poe does a pretty good job of pissing off Hux and his crew by blowing shit up until a big ass Star Destroyer comes out of hyperspace, and it has these really powerful cannons that can decimate whole planets from space. Kind of like the Death Star, and I'm telling you, they can never get away from the Death Star shit. General Leia tells Poe to fall back, but he doesn't want to leave just yet because he knows that if he destroys this huge ship, he can save the Resistance from future conflict. He goes against General Leia's orders and calls in these big bomber ships that unload like you wouldn't fucking believe. But the First Order sends out their TIE fighters and eradicate every bomber except for one. With some difficulty, the last bomber's pilot, a girl with like a half-moon medallion, she sacrifices her life to destroy the Star Destroyer, blowing up with it. Because of this, the Resistance escapes and blasts off into hyperspace in their own big-ass ship. We cut to Poe getting bitch-slapped by Leia, saying he's demoted because he disobeyed orders and unnecessarily sacrificed a lot of lives. BAM! Finn wakes up from his coma and scrambles around the ship because he's confused and lost. Poe catches up with him and tries to calm him down, but all Finn can say is, where's Rey? Now we're on the planet Luke was hiding for all these years, Octo. We see Rey approach Luke and hand him his lightsaber. He grabs it from her and examines it, and just when you think he's about to say something of importance, he throws it over his shoulder and storms off. At that point, I was like, what the hell just happened? We waited two years for Luke to throw the beloved Skywalker lightsaber over his shoulder like it's nothing? What I would have personally done was have a POV of Luke as Rey hands him his father's lightsaber. As soon as he examines it, he has flashes of memory, sort of how Rey had at Maz's castle. The first time Obi-Wan gave it to him on Tatooine. How he fought Vader. Flashes of Anakin's memories and Rey's, and when he throws it away from him, he's mortified of what he had just seen. Events that he never knew had happened, and memories he wants to forget. Nope, just a shoulder toss like it's nothing. But the harsh reality is, to Luke, that lightsaber is nothing. It holds a lot of meaning to us, of course. That saber has been around for three trilogies now, but Luke didn't see it like that. It was just a thing from his past he wanted to forget, so we threw it like it was nothing. So Luke storms off and hides in a little hut made out of stone, and Chewie gets pissed off and breaks down the door. Luke is obviously confused, like, why is Chewie here? Who is this girl? Rey says they came to find him and flew to the island in the Falcon. Luke finally puts the pieces together and asks Rey, where is Han? We cut to Kylo Ren, literally, with his face torn to shit, and he's got, like, some kind of space band-aid to cover up his wounds. He goes to see Snoke and kneels before him with his helmet on. We see Snoke, finally, in the flesh, in a completely red-tinted room surrounded by Praetorian guards. Snoke seems to sympathize with Kylo, asking him about his wounds, saying when he found Kylo, he thought he found something truly special, a descendant of Darth Vader himself. But he then goes to say that Kylo is no Vader. He's just a boy playing dress-up with a squiggly lightsaber. Kylo gets defensive, standing up against Snoke, and the Supreme Leader points to the ground, which erupts in an electricity wave, knocking him back. The Praetorian guards point their weapons at Kylo, and the Supreme Leader takes a seat on his throne, telling Kylo he was wrong about him. He is nothing special. Kylo storms out of the throne room, and as he descends down the elevator shaft, takes a good look at his helmet, and in anger smashes it to pieces and orders two officers to prepare his ship. The First Order was going after the Resistance again. We cut to Finn, Poe, and Leia, discussing what they should do next. We are told that Leia has a wrist tracker that is connected to Rey, so that when she comes back with Luke, she'll know where to find the Resistance. The Resistance ship exits hyperspace, and right behind them, is the First Order, and they get ambushed by a shit ton of Star Destroyers and Snoke's ship itself. This ship is huge. It's bigger and badder than Vader's, as it literally takes up the whole screen. The First Order gives it everything they have as the Resistance scrambles to defend themselves. Kylo Ren takes to his ship himself to finish the supporting Rebel cruisers once and for all, and on one of those cruisers is his mother, Leia. He locks onto her ship with a band of TIE fighters behind him, and he has a hard time deciding whether or not he should destroy the ship, killing Leia inside. Leia senses Kylo, and he senses her. He then decides not to blow up the ship, but his allies do it anyway, and Leia is sucked into the vacuum of space. Many supporting cruisers are blown up left and right, 
The main cruiser doesn't have a lot of fuel left. It has only fuel enough for one more hyperspace leap. The First Order rally their fighters and prepare for another attack. When we cut to Leia, she's floating in space. Destroyed ships floating with her. We see her reach out as the Force wakes up inside of her. She pulls herself back to the main cruiser, saving herself and Finn and Poe open the blast door to bring her inside as she falls into a coma and the main cruiser blasts off into hyperspace. Don't get me wrong, it is kind of cool that Leia was given some Force capabilities on screen, but through canon and lore it was mostly said that Leia was more of a mental Force user. We just saw her and Kylo sense each other, but in other stories, she had the ability to use her Force powers mentally to keep her wits about her in critical situations, and in that way she became a better general. Anyway, we can't change that, and it is what it is. We cut to Finn as he puts the pieces together. The First Order literally just followed the Resistance through hyperspace. A lot of people didn't like this hyperspace tracking subplot, but if you pay close attention in Rogue One when Jin Erso is looking through Imperial files for the Death Star plans on Scarif, she comes across a file called hyperspace tracking. So that kind of ties it all together, and it isn't a plot hole. Anyway, Finn takes the wrist tracker from Leia while she's in her coma and tries to use an escape pod to go find Rey. He knows what the First Order is doing, and he doesn't want Rey to come back to an all-out war. You can tell in The Last Jedi, Finn just wants to make sure Rey is okay as she literally saved his life on Starkiller Base. While he tries to escape, he meets his engineer girl who goes by the name of Rose. Rose is the sister of that bomber pilot with the Half Moon medallion. You can see she has the other half, and she approaches Finn, telling him he's her hero and how she had to make sure other deserters were put down with their electro problem when they tried to escape. She soon realizes what Finn is doing, and she shocks Finn and tries to take him to the new admiral in charge called Admiral Haldo. Finn tries to explain to Rose that he's only trying to find his friend and stray her away from the First Order because of the hyperspace tracking. After all, Finn used to be a stormtrooper, so he knows First Order technology. Rose hesitates and realizes what this means, and she thinks that maybe there's a way to disable it. So then Rose, Finn, and Poe get together to see what they can do to stop the Star Destroyer, because it will come back for the Resistance. They talk to Maz through Space Skype or something, and as she's currently engaged in an awesome fight we only see a little bit of, she tells the group that they need to go find this master hacker with a flower brooch on this distant planet we've never seen before, so that Rose and Finn can infiltrate the ship, hack the hyperspace tracking, and leave with the resistance as they only have one more hyperspace jump left before they run out of fuel. So Rose and Finn go to this planet that's filled with all the rich fucks in the galaxies. Rose has resentment towards this planet because it supports child slavery and space horse racing for bets. They take BB-8 with them, and they are instructed by Maz, as I said before, to find a man with a flower brooch in his jacket. And some people thought instantly, this has to be Lando. That would be so cool to introduce him back that way. Nope. He's just some guy, as we see in a casino scene, with a bunch of aliens and humans playing slot machines and shoving coins into BB-8. Ah, uh, don't ask. Finn and Rose get arrested and put in jail because of some stupid misunderstanding with an alien dude. Again, don't ask. And in that prison, the two of them find this guy named DJ, who's basically like a bounty hunter, but he's a master hacker. He helps break him out and agrees to help hack the hyperspace tracking for a price. Long story short, DJ and BB-8 disappear a while to go steal a ship, and Rose and Finn escape with the horses. Rose convinces a couple kids to release the gates, and we see all the horses run rampant through the streets because they're finally free. They run from the police, and the whole group escapes. Rose then says it was worth coming to the planet because they put a dent in the horse bets and the slavery. The reason why she feels so strongly about this is because when they were kids, Rose and her sister were once slaves, taking care of the horses. That's the Rose and Finn subplot. I said in my last review that there were certain scenes that would have had no negative impact on the movie if they weren't put in. This is one of those scenes. The only relevant part is a conversation between DJ and Finn which basically reveals the fact that the First Order and Resistance get their weapons and ships from the same people. Woohoo, I guess. Let's cut to Rey and Luke on Octo. Rey follows Luke all over the island as he completes his daily routine. Fishing with a gigantic stick. Milking green milk from a space ant eater with udders. Hiking long distances. You, you get the gist. As Rey is following Luke, a strange spiritual force is calling to her. A giant tree in the island. She goes inside the tree, and sitting on a table are the ancient Jedi texts filled with all the secrets of the Force. Luke follows her, and asks her why she's really on Octo. She can't answer, of course. She doesn't know how she fits in. She just felt the Force one minute, and she's scared of what it is. Luke tells her that the Jedi screwed up a lot throughout Star Wars history, which is true, and the light, and the dark, the balance, it's all bullshit, so that's why the Jedi needs to end. After a little more convincing, Luke agrees to train Rey, and shows her why the Jedi needs to go. As Rey wakes up the next morning, she looks up and BAM! She's inside of Kylo Ren's Star Destroyer. Kylo is just staring at her. He has no idea what's going on. He can't see her surroundings, but she can see his. She fires her blaster and she's back on Octo. 
She goes outside of her hut, and she's back on the Star Destroyer again with Kylo Ren. She's obviously pissed at him because he killed Han Solo, and they're both shocked at what's going on until Luke makes his presence known to Rey, and she's back on Octo. At this point, I was like, there's got to be a connection between Kylo and Rey. So now she's training with Luke. He tells her the Force is the entity that's in between everything, the energy that is everywhere. Rey closes her eyes and sees everything on the island. The Porgs that live there? Ah, uh, yes, the Porgs. But anyway, she sees life, death, light, and the dark. She sees a hole that leads right to a Dagobah-style tunnel, and her mind goes right to it because it has something that she wants. Luke has to stop her, as she is now losing control. He says he's seen this kind of power before, and he's scared of what it will do to Rey. He tells her how Palpatine destroyed the Jedi along with Vader, and how it was the Jedi's fault. So then, he refuses to teach Rey any further about the Force. So Rey takes it upon herself to train. She trains with the Skywalker lightsaber and tries to see how everything works. She decided to inspect the dark hole in the island and something pushed her down inside, where she finds a mirage which duplicates herself and sees a mirror that supposedly will show her what she's always wanted to know, who her parents are. The mirror shows a reflection of Rey, and she truly feels alone. Not even the mirror can tell her. She connects with Kylo Ren again through the Force, and she tells him how alone she felt. Luke doesn't want to teach her. She's at a loss. Kylo then tells Rey the real reason why he resents his parents and Luke Skywalker. As a child... Lei and Han always knew Ben Solo had immense power hidden within him like Vader, so they handed him over to Uncle Luke to train him in the right way. As Ben grew up, Luke noticed that something has been twisting his mind and turning him to the dark side. Snoke was getting inside of his head, so one day Luke attempted to kill Ben in his sleep and after fighting back against the Jedi Master, Ben knocked him out and destroyed the Jedi Order Luke had made and ran off with some students who formed into the Knights of Ren. Rey finally understood Kylo's resentment to his family, and they both reached out to each other and touched hands. Luke comes out of nowhere and breaks the connection between them and tells Rey that she is going a little bit too far. She grabs her staff and fights Luke as she is about to strike him down with his own lightsaber when she grabs with the Force. She demands the truth regarding Kylo. Luke then told her that he always knew Ben had the dark side within him, but he thought that he could suppress it. He went to go talk to him, but as the young Ben Solo slept, Luke sensed corruption within the boy, and he knew he had to kill him before he destroyed what he created. He ignited his green lightsaber in a split-second decision to kill his nephew, and then he stopped. He was ashamed what he would even consider this, and Ben woke up and attacked Luke, knocking him out, and when he came to, everything had been destroyed. Ray told him that Kylo still has good in him. When they touched hands, she saw his future and it held Ben Solo coming back from the dark side just as Vader did. She takes off in the Falcon, leaving Luke and Octo. She was going to find Kylo Ren and stop him from whatever he was doing next. Now we cut to Finn, Rose, DJ, and BB-8 as they infiltrate the Star Destroyer to hack into its hyperspace tracking. While Exposition City was going on with Rey and Finn, the First Order have managed to follow the Resistance and have been shooting them down, and the main cruiser's shields are breaking. Poe contacts the gang and tells them to hurry because Admiral Haldo is taking whatever fuel is left in the cruiser and putting it into the escape pods. The Resistance was abandoning ship. Finn tells Poe he needs a little more time, and Poe decides to band together some pilots and devise a mutiny on the ship and take it over. Admiral Haldo and other officers are restrained, and Finn, Rose, and DJ hack the ship, only to be caught by a bunch of stormtroopers, and following them is Captain Phasma herself. Poe realizes what has happened to Finn, and just as he is about to call the mutiny off, Leia comes to and neutralizes him with a stun gun. Leia and Haldo load everyone in the pods, and it is then revealed that the main cruiser was just a distraction for the First Order. The pods would take off and land on Crate, a salt planet with an old rebel base from the Galactic Civil War. With the main cruiser destroyed by the First Order, they would believe the Resistance is gone, and they would move on while the remaining Resistance fighters waited it out on Crate. Poe soon realizes this as well, and for once, he goes with the plan. Admiral Haldo tells Leia she will stay on the main cruiser and go down with the ship. Someone has to pilot it to make sure the First Order take the bait. And in a touching moment, Haldo and Leia say goodbye to each other as they are old friends, and the Resistance takes off in the pods. Rey goes to Snoke's ship using a mini escape pod from the Falcon. She lands on the ship to be greeted by Kylo, and she's put in cuffs. Kylo was bringing Rey to Snoke himself. This scene in particular is very reminiscent to Return of the Jedi, and it's a pretty cool callback in my opinion. On the way to Snoke's throne room, Rey tells Kylo that he doesn't have to do this. He could very easily stand up to his master and how she saw his future. Kylo then reveals that when they touched hands, he saw Rey's future as well, and that he knows who her parents are. Now we are in Snoke's throne room, and he tells Rey the First Order knows about the Resistance evacuation plan, and that they will be destroyed. He takes the Skywalker lightsaber and demands the location of Luke. Rey, of course, refuses, so in turn, Snoke throws her around the room and tortures her till he finally uses the Force Insight ability like Kylo does and rips the information from her mind. Snoke brings Rey to her knees and faces her towards Kylo, telling him to execute her and complete his training. Kylo knows what he has to do now. He picks up his cross guard with one hand and in the other rotates the Skywalker lightsaber beside Snoke. Snoke has his eyes shut, 
filling into Kylo's mind, narrating what he will do next. Foolish child, I see his every intent. You cannot turn him. He now turns the saber and strikes down his true enemy. The Skywalker lightsaber ignites into Snoke's side and Kylo cuts him in half with the force. Rey reaches out and grabs the saber and the Praetorian guards charge at Kylo and Rey in a scene that has never been done before. Kylo and Rey fight together against the guards. Dark side user and Jedi versus a common enemy. That is absolutely badass. The fact that Snoke was killed off so quick was kind of upsetting to a lot of fans. For two years now, we have been speculating and making theories for this mysterious character, and he turns out to be really no one. There were so many Easter eggs in the movie pointing towards Snoke's identity, but in reality, he was just a placeholder for Kylo to break free from a dark force and take control of his own story, and I think that is pretty cool, regardless. An epic battle ensues with Kylo and Rey fighting in complete sync of each other, taking down the guards. It is said that the Praetorian guards were proficient in multiple styles of martial arts and are trained to kill Jedi. Killing these guards are not an easy task. Kylo and Rey struggle to take down a handful of them, but when they finally do, Kylo turns to Rey and tells her to let the past die. The Resistance, the First Order, the Jedi, the Sith, all of it. Just let it die. He reaches out to Rey and tells her to join him in ruling the galaxy. Neither of them would have to be alone anymore. He tells Rey she's always known about her parents. They were nobodies, just scavengers who sold their daughter for drinking money. She was nobody and she didn't fit into this story, but Kylo didn't think she was nobody. Rey refuses and she grabs for her saber only to be countered by Kylo. The two engage in a tug of war fight for the Skywalker lightsaber until the saber cracks in half and the crystal causes an explosion in the ship. And at this point, the Resistance escape pods are making their way towards Crate, but the First Order destroyers are decimating each pod one by one rapidly. Not a lot of time is left until all are destroyed. And Finn and Rose are still in captivity. DJ had betrayed the group and told Phasma the Resistance's plans. Phasma orders Finn and Rose's execution, and just as they are about to die by these execution troopers that we only see a little bit of, and plus they look super cool, BB-8 wires himself into an ATST on the ship and starts blowing shit up. Finn grabs an Electra Tomfo staff and fights Phasma head-on in an epic clash. He defeats Phasma again, and she falls to her death. Him, Rose, and BB-8 get in the ship and head after the Resistance. Haldo knows that without her help, the Resistance won't make it, so she turns the main cruiser around and in the most visually stunning moment I've seen in this movie, blasts off into hyperspace through Snoke's ship. Everything is silent, and all you see is the shadow the two ships make, then the explosion. In my opinion, it should have been Leia who sacrificed herself. It would have been a respectful and honorable goodbye to Carrie Fisher's character, but that's not the case. Kylo comes to with General Hux standing over him. The explosion caused Kylo to be rendered unconscious while Rey took Snoke's personal ship to escape. Kylo declares himself as the new Supreme Leader, and he orders every other Star Destroyer to head for Krayt. The Resistance arrive on the Salt Planet and set up defenses. The First Order soon follows up with AT-ATs and Gorilla Walkers. The base closes as main doors, and the First Order brings in a barricade cannon that will rip right through the wall. An all-out war erupts, with Finn and Rose and these line speeders, and the other soldiers down in the trenches, kind of like Hoth. After a couple minutes of on-screen battle time, the Resistance starts getting their asses kicked. Finn tries to head head on into the barricade cannon to stop the First Order from getting through, but Rose stops him and they both crash. This is, yet again, another scene that really didn't matter a whole lot in the movie. Rey also comes in and tries to take out TIE fighters in the air with the Falcon. Chewie, of course, is piloting it, and Rey is still using that shitty backup turret. Once the Resistance realizes they can't win, they go back to the base and hole up. Leia said that she had allies in the Outer Rim that she could call, but when she used the distress signal, nobody came. All hope seems to be lost until a dark figure walks up to Leia. It was none other than Luke Skywalker. Back in Octo, Luke decided to burn the ancient Jedi texts. He knew it was time for the Jedi to officially end. Just as he was about to burn the tree down, we see a familiar set of ears on the bottom of the screen. Force Ghost Yoda had visited Luke. Yoda noticed hesitation within Luke, so he called down lightning from above and burnt it himself. Luke seemed mortified at this, and Yoda told him they're just books, not exactly page turners. They aren't important. The girl, meaning Rey, already knew everything she had to about the Force. He told Luke that what happened with Kylo wasn't his fault, and that now Ben has to walk on his own path, whether it be back to the light or further down the darkness. He said failure is the best teacher, and he vanishes, leaving Luke on Octo with a decision to make. Luke approaches Leia and apologizes for being absent throughout the years. Leia says she knows her son is gone, but Luke tells her nobody is truly gone as he pulls out Han's dice from his pocket and gives them to Leia. He kisses her on her forehead and goes out to face Kylo. This is very special to the movie. Luke's journey began with Leia. I mean, even on Octo, R2 reminds Luke of the past playing the hologram message from Leia in A New Hope. 
Luke knows that he has to play the Obi-Wan rule and save his friends. So he goes outside and Kylo Ren is infuriated. He appears younger, his hair is cut, and his beard isn't as messy. He looks more alive. Kylo commands all the walkers to fire at him and after a barrage of cannon blasts, the smoke clears and the Jedi Master is still untouched. Kylo decides to deal with Luke himself and goes down to his level. Luke and Ren face each other for the last time and Luke ignites the blue Skywalker lightsaber. Strange, wasn't that just destroyed a couple minutes ago? They engage in a very quick fight. Luke dashes across the screen with mind-blowing speed and agility. But another thing we notice is Kylo is leaving tracks in the salt. Luke is not. Luke keeps dodging Kylo and taunting him, and Poe realizes that he is just distracting Kylo for the resistance to escape. The group tries to find a back way out, but is closed shut with rocks. And with the force, Rey is on the other side and lifts the rocks and brings everyone along with her on the Falcon. The fight between the two force users continues, and Kylo swears he will kill the last Jedi, meaning Luke. Luke says that he isn't the last Jedi, referring Rey, and that if Kylo kills Luke in anger, he will always be with him, just like Han. And as Kylo goes for the finishing blow, it is revealed Luke on Crate is a force projection of himself, and he is still on Octo physically. He disappears from Crate, and he collapses after he tells Kylo he'll see him around. All the remaining strength Luke had is gone. He looks up to see the two sons of Octo rise and fall, and the Jedi Master fades away peacefully. Kylo realizes the Resistance has escaped, and through the Force, he sees Rey for one last time before she shuts him out of her head and lets it be known that the temporary bond that they had was over. What is interesting is during the Snoke scene, he told Rey and Kylo he set the link up between the two of them to get Kylo to lure Rey in, unbeknownst to Kylo. If Snoke is truly dead, how were they able to connect again? But anyway, in the Falcon, we find out Rey took the Jedi text before she left Octo, and Leia tells her that they have all they need to fight the First Order, a Jedi to fight alongside with them, and an even more powerful ally watching over them. We cut to that rich planet with the horses. We see the slave children play with little figures of Jedi as they tell the story of Luke Skywalker and his legendary sacrifice. One of them goes outside and seems to force grab a broom and start sweeping as he stops to look at the stars. We look down at his hands and he is wearing a resistance ring, letting everyone know that people still believe in the resistance and that maybe Rey will teach a new generation of Jedi. There were some things in this movie that really made it unique. The epic fight with Kylo and Rey, the gorilla walkers, the epic hyperspace jump through Snoke's ship, but there were also moments that brought the film down like the saber toss over the shoulder, Snoke's death, Leia flying through space using the force, and the Finn and Rose supply. As I said before, the movie does great with some things, but in others not so much. But in my opinion, it is a good movie. I'm sure making episode 9 will be a challenge, as the next director will have to piece together more things for this new story. I hope you enjoyed this review, comment down if you watched this movie, and if you liked it, then go ahead, like this video, <laughs> and uh, thank you for watching. See you later.